Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we're going to join our voices together with the bell choir this morning from Great Lakes Academy in singing praises to God. We're going to start with hymn number 547, Be Thou My Vision, 547.
Happy Sabbath, church. Hear those bells are ringing. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, and it's cold on the outside, but man, it's warm on the inside. Uh, you, you, I'm sure everybody uh, uh, felt that nice shift of weather. I know we were waiting for it, weren't we? I don't know about you, but for some reason, I kind of like the cold more than I like the heat. Because when it's cold, you can warm up, right? So let's make, let's just thank God for the, the changes of weather. I know the fall, uh, fall colors are looking good. Uh, we have a few announcements for you uh, today. Um, first off, I just want to say I'm going to miss you next week. Because I'll be out of town, our family is going to be out of town. I'll be speaking at a retreat this coming weekend. Uh, and then taking a few days of uh, vacation. Come on up, Carol. Um, uh, but you know how it goes. We may be out of sight, but you're never out of my heart. And so I'll be thinking about you and praying for you, and I might send you a picture or two, all right? So uh, continue to uh, uh, have a, a blessed time. Uh, and as next week, Dr. Collins, who this week they're, they're out uh, uh, for ministry, uh, he'll be speaking next week, uh, and I know that you will be blessed. Coming up, Carol, you have uh, an announcement to share uh, for us pertaining to our community service. Yeah, this is a quick announcement. If you look in your bulletins, you'll see everything that we're doing. Um, but we're also, this coming November 12th, at Bridges of Hope, we're serving another meal, and we need servers. Um, between Bridges of Hope and community service, this time we're going to provide the food, like a Thanksgiving meal. So you won't have to worry about doing any cooking this time. Um, but we do need servers, and we also need servers for de December 9th meal. So I'm going to send this around. Have, we've already got some people to sign up, but we need some more. And also to remind you, of, also the serving, let me tell you, it only takes an hour. So if you're at Bridges of Hope at 645, um, you'll only be there about an hour, and you're all on your way. And it does a good blessing, believe me. A blessing for the others and for us, too. So also Feed the Creek. That is every um, other Monday, every other Tuesday. We've had people, I think last week we had seven people show up at their Feed the Creek bagging. Uh, I think they packed 270 some bags, and that's an hour too. You get there at 9:30 in the morning, you leave by 10:30, and you do a good blessing for the community. So that's on here too. So I am going to send this list around. I'll start out at the back on this side, bring it up this way, pass it over, and pass it back, and I'll get it. Thank you so much for your help. We've had, I think we had five new servers, including little Eliana, on oh. October 21st, and she had a good time, and she even had a couple cookies left over. So see, there are some good things, treats at the end too. So come and join us. Awesome. So it is, uh, if you are able to share and to help out in these community efforts, please be a part of that. And there'll be more opportunities as uh, we continue to go further and further into our community. Uh, so I would just like to uh, extend a very special welcome uh, to our GLA Handbell Choir. And Juliana, uh, Miss Dunn, would you please stand? This is the leader. All right, they, uh, they have been doing a, a beautiful job. I know they you're at Ringfest right now. You're heading back there shortly after, right? And I hope that that's been beautiful and a good experience for you. And some new friends and new faces in the congregation. It is good to see you. We'll get to uh, 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 meet a little bit today. For today, we're going to have food after church. You know you got to stay for food, all right? Here at Beaver Creek, we like to fellowship, and we like to enjoy our time together after church. So... Uh, please stay for that. There are a few, a uh, couple more announcements. Um, if you would switch that over to the PowerPoint screen for me so that it could be, uh, um, there we go. Um, so we, this past Friday, uh, this past Thursday, sorry, you would have received the announcement that one of our members uh, passed, uh, Doris Elaine Roberts. Uh, the funeral service is going to be on Monday at 1 uh, p.m. over there at uh, Morris Sons. That's on Dorothy Lane. So if any of you are able to be there, uh, just come on over and support the family. Uh, now, there was an error in our update that she was going to turn 97. Okay? She's actually turning 96. Uh, was going to be turning 96. So that was the error there. But please, if you are able to come and be with the family, support the family, then uh, please do so on Monday at 1 PM. You also heard that uh, Warner and Elfried Gadella celebrated 65 years of marriage. 
Isn't that amazing? Uh, unfortunately, today, uh, even right now, would you please keep Warner in prayer because he's currently in surgery. Uh, so please keep him in prayer. It's a, it's a tough situation, but their love always beams. You should see Elfried when she's talking about her husband. It's just amazing to see after 65 years. Uh, then uh, on the 16th of November, Dr. Calvin Taylor, some of you might know, know him or know about him, he'll be with us for a worship service, and he'll have uh, that 1115 uh, time, and there is going to be a special community concert at 4 p.m. with refreshments to follow. Uh, those announcements should be in your bulletin. And uh, on the 23rd, if you were able to support this event, Hope for Families, you know the families under attack. And there is uh, an initiative called Hope for Families from right here in the Dayton area that have invited Jamie George to come and do a benefit concert. They'll be raising funds for uh, single moms. This is their initial uh, project. But please come on out and uh, be a part of that as we support our community. Also, uh, there will be uh, uh, the Jeremy Winston Corral. Now, uh, Dr. Ed, how many more spaces do you have for choir? Huh? You still got more voices? We got Need more voices? We need people to spend a lot of time. <clears throat> Those that we have who have committed, what uh -huh. we need is a commitment to, to continue. Uh, we only have four more practices. All right. So we're short on that. So. All right. So today, after, after food, we'll, we'll be able to sing a few notes. Are we having practice well, today? Think, absolutely. All right. What we would say is those who are in the choir who actually, um, you know, come and go to the front of the line right after our guests. Our guests obviously come first, but then let's see if we can get our choir members through so we can get started. We've got a lot of work to do. All right. So if you're here for the first time, you're a guest. If you're the second time, you're a friend. All right. So the guests go first. Is that all right? Okay, and then tomorrow, there's going to be children's choir practice at 6 p.m. So uh, everyone is gearing up for the, uh, that uh, program that is scheduled for December 14. You're going to hear some more about that. It's going to be our end of year Christmas program. So please, those who can be a part of that, come on out and be a part of that. Board members, please be reminded of our meeting on Monday. And of course, save the date, every one of you for our end of year dinner, December 15 at 5 p.m. It's going to be wonderful, it's going to be beautiful, and I pray that the Lord will bless you as we continue into now our service today. Scriptural call to worship this morning is from Psalm 118. It says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send me now thy prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
Let's stand together as we sing our hymn of praise, hymn number 33, Sing a New Song to the Lord. Let's make sure we tune our voices together as we sing this beautiful hymn. Let's have the altos, the basses, the tenors. Let's resound as we sing praises to our Lord. Singing. Sing a new song to the Lord, He to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in His triumph and tell of His power. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the end of the earth, see His salvation in show. Good morning, church. This is the time when we prepare to collect the morning's tithe and offering. The verse for today for offertory is Exodus 35, verse 24. That's Exodus 35, verse 24. And it reads, Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering and every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. This verse that was selected is one of the many verses in Exodus 35 that depicts the spirit of giving that the Israelites displayed when they were called upon to support God's cause. I'll read a brief explanation of what was happening then. And it's taken from Eternity Pass by Ellen White, chapter 50, verse, uh, page 379, rather. It says, the plan of Moses to raise means for the building of the tabernacle was highly successful. He made no grand feast. He did not invite the people to scenes of uh, merriment dancing and amusement. Neither did he institute lotteries. The Lord directed Moses to accept gifts from everyone that gave willingly. And the offerings came in so great abundance that Moses bade the people cease bringing, for they had supplied more than could be used. God has made men his stewards. Says the Lord, them that honor me, I will honor. God loveth a cheerful giver. 
And when his people with grateful hearts bring their gifts and offerings to him, not grudgingly or of necessity, his blessing will attend them as he has promised. The work of the gospel, as it widens, requires greater provision to sustain it than was called for anciently. This makes the law of tithes and offering of even more urgent necessity now. If his people were liberal to sustain his cause by volunteer, voluntary gifts, God would be honored and many more souls would be won for Christ. This was an inspirational example of how God's people contributed to his cause. I pray that we will do likewise. Will the ushers come forward to collect this morning's tithe and offering? Let's pray. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for what you have done for us. As we are about to collect this morning's tithes and offering, we pray your blessings upon it. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. Help us, Lord, to be willing to give in such a way that others will be blessed. We pray that the funds that's collected here, those that are contributed online, we pray, for Father, that it will go to support your cause. And as a result, your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now is the time that we have the privilege of coming before the throne of grace and making our needs known to God and praising him for what he has already done for us. This morning, I'm going to ask you to do a little something different than we do here. We are going to take every prayer that's in your heart collectively, loss of a member of family, sorrow, pain, brokenness, any requests, we're going to ask you to just raise your hand. And those of you who know to pray for others, do so this week. So we'll be praying for each of you. you God knows every need. He knows our hearts. So let's keep that in mind this morning. Let's start with our prayer song. Now, dear
Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on this lovely Sabbath morning praising your name for who you are and for what you have done. We see that you have filled the world with all kinds of wonders, that you are the great, great, great creator. And it is beyond our imagination the marvels that you have done, and the marvels that you have made. And we see that you are a great lover of beauty and the ultimate artist, and we see that painted across the canvas of the sky every morning and every evening. And it's always different, but always spectacular. Lord, we're, we're just in awe of everything that you do. And all the creatures on this earth, also different and, and the variety is amazing. And it's, it's just beyond comprehension. Lord, we come before you this morning asking that you would give us each one of your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to each one commit our lives to you, to surrender to you fully, that you may fill us with your Spirit and give us the burning desire to ask for your Spirit day by day and mm -hmm. moment for moment, that we may in fact, receive of that Holy Spirit. Lord, this is the most important thing that we need. Without it, we are lost individually and corporately. So, Lord, we ask for, for you to give us the obedience that we need to be able to receive your Spirit as well. We realize that all of these things are your will, and so we we ask for them with confidence. We believe that you will give them to us and we Amen. thank you for them. Amen. Lord, we also ask that you would guide in the affairs of state. We realize that you have sent the angels to hold back the winds of strife until your people can be sealed. And we see that happening as we watch and see the news of every day. That the winds of strife are blowing. And that they are ready to tear this world apart. And yet they are being withheld. Supernaturally by your power. And so Lord we ask that you would. Seal it, each one of us into your truth. <coughs> that we may understand it intellectually. And that we may pledge our hearts to it that we may be entirely loyal to you, that we cannot be moved, come what may. Lord, we just ask that you would do all of these things, that you would be with the leaders of our church, both locally and regionally, and of the worldwide movement, and that you would be with the leaders of the state that you would guide them in their decisions. Heavenly Father, at this moment, we recognize who you are, omnipotent creator, full of majesty. We ask you now that through your Holy Spirit that you will empty us, that we will be able to hear your voice, feel your presence, and praise you as you would have us to do today, this morning. Father, we're, Jesus, we thank you because of the redemptive work that you have done on the cross. Mm -hmm. And we accept that gift. Father, give us of your Holy Spirit that enable us to carry out your will in our lives. And we thank you for the work that you are doing in each of us, individually, corporately, as a church, Father, may we bless those that we come in contact with, and we may not shy away from those divine appointments that you have for each of us. Lord, fill us with your spirit is my prayer at this time. 
And as we come this morning, morning individually and corporately, each of us, we know we are broken. Some are mourning loss of loved ones, others in beds of illness, others facing surgeries, Lord. Um, you know every heart. You know every tear that is shed at times. Provide for us, Father. Provide us with your spirit. Provide us with your joy, with your peace, that we may be able to face every challenge with confidence that you are at the head and leading us forward. We remember especially those who um, mourning, those who are broken, Lord, in some way or another. We're all broken, but more, some more than others. And just come in and, and bless us and help us that as a loving members of this family, of church family, that we will support and uplift one another. We thank you for all the benefits that you provide, our homes, our health, our families. Father, we, there, it's just endless. But again, we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit so that knowing that if we seek you and put you first, everything else will come around. We're so grateful for all that you do for us. Bless us now. Open up our hearts we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's now time for the children's story. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a logistical problem this morning. I think the solution will be have the children sit on the floor in the center aisle here. And then Heather will be able to, and David will be able to uh, to give them the children's story. So at this time, the children are coming around to collect the lamb's offering. This goes to the Pathfinder and, and Adventure Club and also to the Worthy Student Fund for Spring Valley Academy. I look kind of silly, don't I? 
Here, we have a whole bunch of Air Force guys that are, that are here. What, what type of suit am I wearing? A zoot suit. A flight suit. This is kind of what I wear when I'm at work. What I do is I'm on a transport team that flies all over the country, either taking kids home that have been in the hospital or bringing kids to my hospital. So I fly in helicopters, I fly in airplanes, and I also do ambulances. So if they're local, I, do in, I travel in an ambulance. Now, what do you think this flight suit does? What's that? Can it protect you from, like, from the G-forces? You're close. It protects me, but not from the G-forces. <laughs> <laughs> nope. This flight suit is made of a special material that is fireproof. So if for whatever reason the helicopter or airplane were to crash, it would protect me from the fire so I can get out safely. Now what do you think the helmet does? I'm sorry? Protects your head. Rain bucket? <laughs> but yes, it protects my head. Now this one does kind of protect me from like the forces of our, my head would be knocked around, but also inside of it, what do you see there? Headphones, yes. And this is this uh, microphone right here. It helps to it helps me communicate with my other crew members. It helps me to communicate with the pilot. So if, if we need to say, hey, something's going on, uh, we can talk back and forth to each other while we're in the helicopter because it's really, really loud. Now, other things that I have on me. Yep, got some scissors here to help to cut the uh, clothes off if we need to. Little scissors. I've got a flashlight. What do you think the flashlight does? dark you can uh like turn on the flashlight and, and go like yep because i work at night so i need to see a lot of times so it's always dark and then this right here no this right here is probably the most important thing i carry it is a reference manual it helps me to know how to do use different types of equipment and set them up it helps me to know how to take care of different uh, sick kids. Like if they got problems with their heart or if they've got a bad infection or if they were burned. It helps me know how to take care of them adequately. And also lets me know how to uh, mix different medications so I can give them the medications that they need in the right amount. You know, God gave us uh, different, a, a different type of suit that we can wear. And so that we can be protected from the devil. Do you know what that is? Anybody know? Well, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13, it says to put on the whole armor of God that we may withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. And he goes through different things to put on. To gird our waist with truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith to protect us from the fiery darts, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. So we need to pray and ask God to, put, to help us put on the armor every day. And just like my reference manual that gives me instructions, God also gave us an instruction book. Do you know what that is? The Bible. That's right. So in Psalms, see if I can find it here, chapter 119, verses 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Meaning that God has shown us, through his Bible, the path we should go, the instructions for our lives. Okay, you all can go back to your seats now. Thank you. I invite you to open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. It's the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And it says, Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, 
one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. Thank you so much, Hambill Choir, for that music. I hope you recognize the song. Come, thou fount of every blessing. 
Come thou fount of every blessing. And just in case you may, you may have missed it, one of our own is in the, is in the choir. Caitlin, thank you so much for being in the choir and for making sure that your choir could come. We're glad, glad for your ministry. You didn't think Pastor Gordon's going to pass that over, right? It's very nice, very nice, very, very nice. You know, one thing I like about uh, the bell choir or bell choirs is that this is an excellent example of everyone being a team player. Every person has to do their part and be on point, be on time. Because you're only playing, you know, one, two, or three, maybe four notes. But if you miss your one note, you could tell. You could tell. All right. I think I may have turned myself off here. Okay, there we go. So uh, you're joining us for the first time. You're getting a handout that uh, goes along with the message more times than not. Nine out of ten times we have a uh, handout that goes along. I hope you have a pen or a pencil. I have an extra pen up here. Anybody wants one? Yep. Pen? Nobody? Yep. Bell ringer? Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Let's see if I could. Yeah. Is that good? All right. And uh, we're actually getting into part six of this series on prayer. And uh, just in case you've missed any part of it, uh, and you'd like to uh, uh, get, a, uh, get a refresher of what, or get a little insight in what we've talked about, you can go watch them on our church website or on our YouTube channel. And uh, I pray that you are blessed. So today, the message is entitled, Prayer, the Useless and the Selfless. Now, I, I could have said the selfish and the selfless. Or I could have said the useless and the useful. But I decided to go the useless and the selfless. Because we're going to touch a little bit on those words here in just a moment. Last week, we looked at the subject, the wordless prayer. The wordless prayer. And again, we compared two words, wordless and speechless. This is not prayer that does not convey meaning. It may be wordless, but it conveys a message. It doesn't use speech, but the meaning is very, very deep. Our scripture reading was Romans chapter 8, from, taken from Romans chapter 8, where it mentions that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with what? Groanings. And we looked at that word groanings. Simply means a sigh. How much can be conveyed with a sigh? And we went back into the Old Testament and we looked at what took place with God's people as they were in Egypt. And those seven steps, God's seven steps in response to a heartfelt groan, really gives us the plan of salvation. And we looked at three verses, Exodus 6, 6 through 8, and found these seven principles that anyone who is, who is going through a burden, whatever that situation is, the loss of a child, loss of a job, difficulty on the work, at the workplace, you name the situations. God hears your prayer when you cannot put it in words. What will he do in response? He will bring you out from under the burden. This is God's own words. In Exodus it says, I will, I will, I will. And we personalized, personalized it and, and, and took it to mean what God will do for each of us. So what will he do? He will bring you out from under the burden. What else will he do? He will free you from bondage. He will redeem you. He will buy you back. He will take you as his child because he doesn't just buy you and say, okay, you're on your own. Uh-uh. He takes you as his child. He will be your God. Notice the beauty of that dual relationship. We know him as God, but guess what? We can also have God as our father. You realize how amazing that is? 
he will bring you into the land. He has a place for you. But guess what? You're not just going to be there in that land because he will give it to you as an inheritance. This is the plan of salvation. And this is the hope that we're looking for. And this is the response that God gives to the wordless prayer. The groaning of the heart. Amen? Praise the Lord because he understands. Sometimes you get up in the morning and you get that phone call. Or you see that text message or you see, get that email and something is going wrong. And all you can do is groan. Know that God hears that prayer. And he understands this is his response. So today we're going to look at the subject, prayer, the useless and the selfless. Help me. Have mercy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you again for the privilege to present your word. Lord, help me always to recognize that this is a privilege. Father, I ask that you'll take the preparation, Lord, and present your word through me. Lord, you have blessed my heart, and I pray that others will be blessed too. Even as you challenge us, Lord, help us, Lord, to, to follow through with the things that we learn. Remind us always to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' precious name. I'm looking for lens. Okay. All right. Today's message is going to prick you. Because it's already pricked me. It's going to be about a practical experience. I have been purposeful in my choice of words. I picked them intentionally. You get my point? Are you ready? All right. Let's go. Prayer, the useless and the selfless. Stay with me. No healthy, you got it, likes feeling pain. Do you agree with that? And notice I put healthy in quotation marks, right? No healthy person likes feeling pain. Being in pain is no fun. And by the way, it's okay if in the sermon you can't say amen, say ouch. That's the, seems to be the universal signal of pain. Have mercy. But pain, notice this. You know this already. Pain in and of itself is not our enemy. Hello? It tells us that there is a... Come on, church. For which we must get help. Now, there is a disorder called congenital analgesia, in which an individual has no. Huh? I, I was waiting to hear your voice, Doc. This is right up your street. Have mercy. No perception of pain. Often, to their own, uh, your voices, voices have gone quiet now. You got it. Often to their own peril. Children with this condition can further harm themselves when some injury goes unnoticed until it is too late. Sadly, because they did not realize they were hurt. Mm, mm, mm. Stay with me on this. Luke, the, 
All right, you're there. Shares a parable of Jesus about two men with the same, we already use problem. With the same, huh? Oh, that's a good one, yeah, but it's a little too long for that, yeah? Keeping it simple. Say, uh, we don't use that word, in, it's been a long time. With the same plight. I got you on that one, huh? But only one, stay with me now, <laughs> only one perceives it. Both men pray, but only one is benefited. How so? Let us humbly study this subject together. Mm. Stay with me. Luke chapter 18. Thank you, Wendy, for reading our scripture reading. Oh, and, and thank you, thank you, uh, David. Yeah, and, and by the way, make sure you know that that was David, not Heather, that told the story, okay? For those of you who, who, who don't know David, thank you so much. That was, that was very powerful. Luke chapter 18, beginning at verse 9. The Bible says, also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now, <laughs> that statement in and of itself might seem like it's only for a certain group of people. But at some point in our Christian walk, at some point in our journey on this earth, this parable is for us. Jesus says, two men went up to the temple to do what, everyone? Pray. Now, remember, two weeks ago, we looked and we recognized that in the original language, there are many different words for prayer. Remember that? Okay. Just like love has many different words and many different words for prayer. And again, the word used here is what word? Anybody remembers? Huh? It's the word prosiokamai. Okay? They went with the intention to worship. This was supposed to be the full experience for which they were going to the temple. They weren't going there simply to ask. But they were going there to enter into a worship experience. Stay with me now. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a publican. The New King James says a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Friends, there's a lot that's going on in these three verses. Now, let's just make sure we understand something, okay? A Pharisee is not simply because he has the name Pharisee a bad person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. You see, there were different groups of people. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Help me with this, Lord. There were those who were on the right and those who were on the left, even in Christ's day. On the left, you had a group called the Sadducees. On the right, you had a group of people called the Pharisees. The Pharisees were overly concerned with religiosity, with laws and forms and customs. Now, let me ask you, are laws important? Yes or no? You better obey the laws of the road. 
And you'd expect that everybody adheres to them perfectly, especially when you're going around a corner. Hello, somebody. You want to make sure that that person is a law keeper, right? Yeah. In these two groups, they were often in clashes. In this particular case here, it's talking about a Pharisee, but there's something that is particular about this guy. Well, there were some other Pharisees. You, you know, there, there was a guy by the name of Nicodemus, right? Was he a good guy or a bad guy, generally speaking? Good guy, but he was a Pharisee, right? So Pharisee doesn't simply mean that you're bad. He had a heart yearning. Man, at the end, or after Jesus died, Nicodemus himself used his wealth to help spread the gospel far and wide. He gave his heart to God. Joseph of Arimathea, a Pharisee, good guys. And of course, the publicans, the tax collectors, were often seen by their people as bad, as traitors. Because they had a job in which they worked for the government. Today, you'd probably call them your IRS agent. They had a job that they had to do, right? They had to collect taxes. Now, sadly, too many of them abused their job. You know, it's interesting, the, 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 the Sabbath school lesson today and what we're talking about today, I was like, wow, Lord, the, the timing of everything. Let's get into this. We want to examine the prayers of Luke chapter 18. Specifically, verses 11, 12, and 13. One, the useless prayer. The other, the selfless prayer. Now, there are many other useless prayers in the Bible. You remember a guy by the name of Saul? Yeah? After he had disobeyed God and rejected God, turned away from God, one time he wanted to know whether he was supposed to go out and, uh, and do a particular campaign. Remember that? And the Lord did what? Did not answer him. Said he didn't answer him by Urim or by the prophets. He didn't answer him at all. Why didn't God answer him? Because Saul had already turned his back against God. He had grieved away the Holy Spirit. And his prayer from then on was useless. You know, sometimes the, uh, the New Testament reminds us that some of our prayers sometimes are useless because we ask the King James says, amiss. We ask with wrong motives. And sometimes uh, the prayer seems to go unanswered. And this is a, this is a very difficult subject sometimes uh, to, to, to study and to accept because sometimes we don't recognize that we have a situation. So let's get back to what's going on here in the New Testament. We're going to look at six main, point, six main points. Follow me. Point number one, the useless prayer. It's declared by a haughty, you know the answer, Pharisee. Notice the statement here. Page 151 of Christ's Object Lessons. Look at this. Whoever trusts in himself that he is righteous will do what? Will despise others. As the Pharisee judges himself by other men, so he judges other men by himself. His righteousness is estimated by theirs, and the worse they are, the more righteous by contrast he appears. Have mercy. You know, pause here for a moment. I like to say this. Praise God that God judges us on the cross, and not on the curve. God doesn't pick somebody from the congregation and say, okay, this person's going to be my standard, and I'm going to judge everybody based on this person. Have mercy, what a problem that would be. It's okay for if teachers want to use that sometime in the classroom, grading on the curve. You know what I'm talking about, right? But in this life, the grading of heaven is done on the cross. But guess what? None of us can attain to that standard on our own. 
So how then can you, can you grade me on a standard to which I cannot attain? Simple. I can attain it for you and give it to you. Mm. If only class and school work was like that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's keep on looking at this. His self-righteousness leads to accusing. Other men he condemns as transgressors of God's law. Thus, he is making manifest the very, what is that word? Spirit of Satan, the accuser of the brethren. With this spirit, it is impossible for him to enter into communion with God. He goes down to his house destitute of the divine blessing. You notice that word spirit. You know, Jesus, when he walked the earth, he, he told us, listen, thou hast heard it said, thou shalt not kill. But the Bible tells us that Jesus came to magnify the law, right? He came to magnify it. What did Jesus say after that? But I say unto you, whosoever hates his brother in his what? Heart is guilty of murder. The spirit of the law is what is at play here in this particular parable. Are we together? The, the Pharisee was a very, very strict adherent to the law as far as he knew. But he had an outward presentation and not an inward manifestation. Stay with me. On the other side, the selfless prayer was offered by a humble publican. Offered by a humble publican. Look at this. The publican had gone to the temple with other worshipers, yeah, like all of us here today, but he soon drew apart from them as unworthy to unite in their devotions. Standing afar off, he would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast. In bitter anguish and self-abhorrence. He felt that he had transgressed against God, that he was sinful and polluted. He could not expect even pity from those around him, for they looked upon him with contempt. What's that person coming to church for? Doesn't he know that we know what he's been up to? What's he doing here? Have mercy. You know one thing we forget about the church? The church is a hospital for sinners, not a hotel for saints. I'm not done yet. When you are admitted and you find healing, you are not discharged, but you join the staff. There's no discharging from this hospital. Yeah? It's not, it's not a hotel. It's a hospital. And when you find the healing that you need, you become a team member. Some of you got to go work in the ER. Hello? Because there are a lot of cases that sometimes coming and coming in, and it's like pandemonium in, 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 in the church. We need a lot of ER people. But some people forget that one time they came in on the ER. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to church. <laughs> We're talking practical Christianity. L listen, listen, you all know I love prophecy. Hello? But knowledge of prophecy without the practice of Christianity is nothing. Stay with me now. He felt, we read this, he could not expect even pity from those around him, for they looked upon him with contempt. Notice this. He knew that he had no merit to commend him to God, and in utter self-despair, he did what? Oh, no, 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 no. Give me another word. He? You heard it. He groaned. 
What do we know about the wordless prayer? Huh. And then he puts that groan into words. And what does he say? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He did not compare himself with others. Have mercy. You know, sometimes uh, we, 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 uh, we pray. Uh, let me just paint, paint a scenario. Mother and child, and they're there, and they say, you know what? Come, we need, we need to pray about this, you know? Oh, Father, Johnny is such a bad boy. Oh, I wish Johnny was more like Chris. You know, Chris, Lord, he obeys me, Lord. And you know, Chris, he, he does what, what is right. In but Johnny, Lord, Johnny, he's so mischievous. Lord, would you help Johnny? Useless prayer. Because it helps no one but hurts both. Let's keep on looking at this. I want you to notice something about the way they present their prayers. Verse 11, stay, stay with me now. Go back with me to the Bible. Okay? We're going to be reading, we're going to be reading these verses over and over and over. Let's stay, make sure we look in the Bible. Okay? Either you have one open or you have one on, but make sure you got one. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. What does it say? Go down with me to verse 13. The tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. What do you notice about their presentation? On the one side, number two, the Pharisee stands with an erect pose. Yeah, you got it. The publican stands with a bowed posture. They're both standing. Let me ask you, anything wrong with standing and praying? No. But there's something else that would represent where the prayer is coming from. Is it merely coming from the head or is it coming from the heart? What else do we notice? Look at this. In verse 11, it goes on to say, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. <laughs> he calls God. But then he says, I thank you that I am not like other men. What do you notice? Look at this. What the Pharisee does is he makes a proclamation. But then look on the other side. The tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful. He brings a petition. One side, the first side, God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men. He's proclaiming his own goodness. But the publican, he brings a petition to God. And keep on looking at this. What does he say? I thank thee that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers. And then he compares himself with somebody else in the very same temple. Even as this tax collector, his fellow worshiper, he compares himself with his fellow worshiper. And then it goes on. He says, I fast twice a week. Let me ask you. Anything wrong with fasting? 
Then he says, I give tithe of all that I possess. Anything wrong with tithing? No. It's a Bible principle. Even though it's coming under attack today, have mercy. But what isn't? What he does is that he counts. Let's look at this. Oh, I got a statement here for you. Okay, yeah, look at this. The Pharisee and the publican represent two great classes into which those who come to worship God are divided. The first two representatives are found in the first two children that were born into the world. Who are those? This is not a New Testament problem. There's nothing new under the... This is the first case. What were, who were they? Cain and Abel. It's interesting. When Eve named her son Cain, you know what she said? I have gotten a man. The word from is inserted by the translator. She said, I have gotten a man, the Lord. That's who she, she wanted and she expected her son to be because she remembered the prophecy given by God in Genesis 3.15. But this son did not even come close to fulfilling that promise. What happened? Let's go back there quickly. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Look at this. Verse 3, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Don't miss that statement. In the process of time. This suggests to us that there was a time when the offering he brought was not merely fruit from the ground. Are we together? In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of the flock. Now notice this. And of their fat. Sometimes we read so fast. Because when we ask, what did Cain bring? He brought fruit. What did Abel bring? He brought a, he brought a lamb. But it says here, and of the fat. What does that mean? Why is the Bible so specific? Why is Moses so specific to mention that? You see, in the sacrificial system that God gave to the children of Israel after they exited Egypt, he gave them a principle. But the principle was already early on in Scripture because who you think would have taught them about the plan of salvation? God himself. And the fat from the animal that was cut away represented sin. So what Abel brought was an acknowledgement of his own sin. So let me ask you, was there something wrong with offering grain and fruit to the Lord, yes or no? No, there wasn't. But this suggests that at this point, this is all Cain wanted to offer because he was no longer going to acknowledge that he was a Sinner. There you have the problem. Look at this. Cain thought himself righteous and he came to God with a thank offering only. Let me ask you, what did the Pharisees say? I thank you that I am not like other men. He only came to make a proclamation of thanks, but not to find forgiveness for his sin. Cain made no confession of sin and acknowledged no need of mercy. But Abel, sadly, whose name means vanity, meaning vain. In other words, Eve, Eve taught at this point that what's the point of giving birth? It's all vain and empty. Because Cain doesn't look like he's the one. So what's this one going to turn out to? But Abel came with the blood that pointed to the Lamb of God. Right there. You've got the Pharisee and you've got the publican. Let's keep looking at this. So point number four, point number four, 
When you go back to Luke chapter 18, the Pharisee mentions that what? I fast twice a week and I give tithe of all that I possess. Nothing wrong with those things. But what he's doing here is that he counts his costly possessions. This is a part of his proclamation and the presentation of his prayer. But on the other side, what does the publican say? Lord, be merciful to me. Uh, he confesses his lowly position. Possessions don't matter. What matters is where are we in proximity to God? I wish we could even hear the language as it was being spoken there by Christ. You can, you can almost hear it with your own mind's ear. The Pharisee, point number five, his prayer resounds with, what is that word? Pride. But the publican, what does the Bible say? He what? He beat, he beat his chest. He recognized his situation. And so he, 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 in bowing his head, Jesus said he didn't even look up. We suggest that his head was bowed. He was subdued by, what is that word? Penitence. His heart was broken for his situation. There's another character that we've been talking about a lot in the series. Anybody remembers his name? Is that you, babes? I mean, Esther? Oh, I did it again. <laughs> That's my wife over there, okay? Yeah, for those of you who don't know. She, you heard what she said? Peter. There's something interesting about Peter. You remember uh, two weeks ago, we studied the unprayed prayer? You remember when Jesus invited Peter and the other two guys that had the same issue like Peter to come with him and pray? Jesus was trying to prevent Peter from falling. Peter didn't have to fall, you know. Peter didn't have to. But he invited Peter, he named him specifically, invited him to enter into a final worship experience with him right there in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was going to go to the cross. But Peter and the others, instead of praying, they were sleeping. And as a result of not entering into prayer, remember he was supposed to do what? Watch and pray. He was supposed to be vigilant and also in an act of worship. Because these would have prevented him from entering into what? Temptation. Notice this. Okay? On one side, you have what I'd like to call the confident Peter. And on the other side, you have the converted Peter. For each of the classes represented by the Pharisee and the publican, there is a lesson in the history of the Apostle Peter. In his early discipleship, Peter thought himself strong. Remember that? Jesus said, listen, all of you are going to desert me. What did Peter say? <laughs> Jesus, what are you talking about, man? You don't know me. Even though all these, 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 these 11 guys, I don't know where the other one went. He went out in the night with a, with a money bag. I don't know what he did that for. But listen, these guys, they might desert you, but I, I will never desert you. Now, oh, that did not make Peter a castaway. Because God saw the diamond in the rough. 
uh, that could only be taken out if it was painstakingly hewn out by his maker. He saw that Peter meant well. And he was patient with him. Oh, that we would be patient with one another. <laughs> Remember though, patience doesn't, patience doesn't come simply by asking for it. Oh, I like to say it this way. Patience is not a gift. It's a fruit. The only way to get it is to grow it. You, you want me to tell you another useless prayer? The child is bothering you. Say, oh, Lord, give me patience. Well, I mean, yeah, you're laughing because you never prayed that prayer, right? I mean, oh, we, we got little angels, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You're going to have a family meeting when you go home now. Have mercy. Listen, patience is not a gift. Go, you go check the Bible. It lists it as a part of the fruit of the Spirit. The only way to get it is by asking the Holy Spirit to water it, fertilize it, and allow it to grow. And you know how else it grows? It grows by use. <laughs> it grows by practice. The only way to get it is to grow it. And Peter had to learn that, 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 that patience was only, sought, was only received that way. What did Jesus say to the disciples when he left them as he ascended? He said that you are to? Uh, yeah, tarry, wait. Oh, have mercy. Wait? That's one thing we don't like to do. Have mercy. But what does the Bible say? They that wait on the Lord will do what? Renew their strength. That's how Peter became strong again. In his early discipleship, Peter thought himself strong like the Pharisee. In his own estimation, he was not as other men are. He was very zealous for God, wasn't he? What did he carry? Yeah. He carried a sword. Listen, no intruder is going to come in here. And he even proved it. Because what did he do? He hacked off the soldier's ear. He also, though, after his experience, was like the publican in his contrition and repentance and like the publican he found what everyone mercy the look of christ assured him of pardon praise the lord so we come now to this next point at the very beginning of this parable verse 9 luke says that he, Jesus, spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. They trusted what? In themselves. So point number six. The prayer was useless because the Pharisee was deceived by self-praise. He was deceived by self-praise. Verse 14 helps us with the, the, the second half of point six. It says, I tell you, speaking of the publican, this man went down to his house, what everyone? Justified. Treated just as if he had not sinned, rather than the other. In other words, he, he came with a burden, but when he left that experience of worship, he left feeling light because he, he was relieved by heavenly pardon. Amen? And Jesus says, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Notice, the Bible says, he who humbles 
himself. You notice that every time you read scripture, every time it comes to that section that says, that talks about humility, it doesn't ever tell you that you are to ask God to humble you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do that. We are to, by the grace of God, to take the initiative to do what? Humble ourselves. Because if God has to humble you, If God has to humble you, the only reason that is is because you had refused to humble yourself. <laughs> this is on your notes as we close. We must have a knowledge of ourselves. A knowledge that will result in what everyone contrition before we can find pardon and peace. Remember the term we used at the very beginning in our introduction? There's a condition that's called what? Congenital analgesia, which is the inability to feel pain. What the Pharisee had was spiritual analgesia. He couldn't feel the pain of his own sin and thought that he was all right. And if you never ever feel sick, you will never ever think you are in need of the great physician. That's the difference. Now, 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 I'm hoping that none of you ever get sick. Amen. Right? Physically. But if for some reason you're feeling some sort of a pain, whether in the chest, someplace else, Please, check it out. But more important than that, sometimes we must always go back to that prayer. Search me, O oh God, and know my what? Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be some wicked way in me. Because sometimes we can't feel it. Sometimes we can't feel it. That's why you go to the doctor to have an, a, a, a physical. Hello. You feel all right, but you say, you know what? Let me just go and check. And somebody poking somebody right now. Say, so you hear that? Go check. And sometimes the doctor says, hey, you're clean as a whistle. You're good to go. But sometimes the doctor might come back slowly in the office and say, uh, <clears throat> Um, there's something I need to tell you. You go like, oh, yeah, what, the sky's blue? Right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But the doctor isn't telling you that because he wants to hurt your feelings, is he? The doctor is telling you that because he has your best interest at heart. That's why we go to the great physician and say, Lord, search me and know my heart. Point out for me something that I need to confess to you so that I can get the healing that I need. The Pharisee felt no conviction of sin. And so the Holy Spirit could not work with him. His soul, now notice this, his soul was encased in a self-righteous armor which the arrows of God, barbed, with true, barbed and true aimed by angel hands, failed to penetrate. Can you imagine that? It is only he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. The story is told of a of, of a uh, coast guard. Uh, not a coast guard. What what are those people they, they call who are at the swimming pool? Lifeguard. Lifeguard. There you go. Yeah. Whew. Lifeguard. 
And the lifeguard was, was at his post of duty. Watching, and most people left, and there's this one guy who said he was going to stay out there, and he's just, you know, swimming, swimming for a long, steady period of time. And some of his family members were, you know, packing up stuff, and they were, they were waiting. But then the guy went into distress, and he went, and he went under. And then he came up again, and he went under. And the lifeguard was simply sitting. Sitting. Then the guy went up again, and he went under. Until finally, he came up the last time, and then he went down, and he didn't seem to be coming up again. And then the lifeguard, like he heard an alarm, he went off, and he whew, down into that pool. And he came up onto the side of the pool and gave CPR and resuscitated the guy. The family members were beside themselves with, with anger and, and all sorts of things. They say, what's your problem? What took you so long? Why didn't you go and rescue him when, he, when you saw him going down the first, second, and the third time? What took you so long? The lifeguard turned to them and said, until a man stops fighting with himself, I can't save him. Had he gone out there, that guy would have fought that lifeguard and both probably would have gone down. Or the lifeguard would say, listen, sorry, I can't help you. You're still fighting. Until a man stops fighting with himself, I can't save him. We must know our real condition or we shall not feel our need of Christ's help. We must understand our danger or we shall not flee to the refuge. We must feel the what? Pain of our wounds or we should not desire healing. That's why we sing, search me, O Lord. That's why we sing, search me, O Lord. So, I pray that today, we will all go back home and not say, did you hear that sermon? No. Say, Lord, search my heart. This is not for us to go back home and say, listen, I got something you need to hear. This is for our own hearts. Search me, oh God. Search me. And so, may the Lord help us to humbly confess our sins when we pray. Is that your desire? Is that your desire? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, today we end on a solemn note. Lord, we're, we're, we're thankful and we're happy and, and joyous for those things that we find in Scripture sometimes that really cause us to be overjoyed with excitement of discovery. But Lord, sometimes... We need to remember that we must be totally dependent upon you. Help us, Lord, to take a lesson from the publican and spend that time with you in private, asking you, Lord, to search our hearts and teaching us, Lord, to confess those things that need to be heard by your ear only. Lord, if there is someone with which we need to make amends, help us, Lord, also to do that. We know that you can bring healing if we allow you. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. And now, Lord, teach us how to pray, I pray. 
In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our closing hymn, 492. 492. But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Before we go, let's also have the blessing of the meal. Father, we thank you for the meal that has been prepared. Pray, Lord, that as we go to enjoy it, that your Holy Spirit's presence will remain with us. Help us to enjoy our fellowship together, Lord, and we ask your blessing on the meal we pray. May we enjoy it together on this year's Sabbath. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 God bless you. Have a good day.